India's national animal is the Royal Bengal Tiger. But did you know that this was not the national animal initially? It was changed to the Royal Bengal Tiger after the Wildlife Act was passed. So which animal was the national animal initially? I'll tell you the answer at the end of this episode. Hi, you're listening to What's New Today and this is Sangeeta from India. This episode is part of our series on India's wildlife conservation journey. And joining me in the next two episodes to talk about tigers is... Hello, I am Smyan Shetty. I study in 4th grade Children's Academy, Thakur Complex, India. I am 9 years old. Hi Smyan, welcome to this podcast episode or should I say uh, welcome back. Because I, the last time I met you, uh, we were both chatting as part of our quiz after the India Space Journey series. How did you enjoy the quiz? It was very interesting and I, I also learned a few things myself. While you were participating in a quiz? Yeah. That's great. Did you have fun? Yeah, a lot of fun. Because I really like space. So I was not stressed. You're not stressed. Wonderful. How much do you like tigers? A lot. <laughs> a lot? Okay. So much that you're comfortable walking close to a tiger? Yeah. What would you prefer? Watching videos of a tiger on YouTube or comfortably walking inside a jungle hoping to spot a tiger? I would like comfortably walking in the jungle hoping to spot a tiger. You don't think a tiger would attack you, right? They probably will attack me, but there is very, very less chance. Yeah, that's true. Unless you go trying to threaten the tiger, right? Yeah. You're absolutely right. If you go into any of India's national parks, there are wildlife rangers and forest rangers, buggies and trackers. They never carry a gun. What do you think they carry with them? Cameras. Yeah, they can carry cameras. What else do you think they'll carry with them? Uh, probably a book to write down to write down how the tigers behave. <laughs> book. <laughs> okay, interesting. So, of all the animals in India, the first wildlife creature that India formally launched a program to protect was Project Tiger. This was launched right after the first and the most important act, which was called the Wildlife Act in 1972. It was passed. Only after that act was passed, hunting of most animals in India was banned. And Project Tiger, when it was launched in 1972 or 73, I forget, the first person whom they wanted to appoint as the chief of the Project Tiger was Kailar Sankhala, but he was still busy finishing his final pieces of research. Whenever people talk about the tiger man of India, it is Kailar Sankhala that they talk about. So for a brief period, another great wildlife conservationist, his name is N.K. Ranjit Singh Ji. He was the man who wrote the act or a man who helped India write the act. They, they requested him, please be the leader of Project Tiger till Kailar Sankhala can come and take over. So, for the first few months, it was N.K. Ranjit Singh Ji who was the leader of Project Tiger. If you were the leader of Project Tiger, right? And now someone has come and told you there are very few tigers. We need to do something about increasing the number of tigers. What would Smyan do? There would have to be a guard in each uh, national park so that, so that if any poacher is carrying guns, uh, the guards will not allow them inside. Right. So the first thing is you have to take care that nobody kills any more tigers. That, that would be enough. So the tiger will start producing and reproducing more and more tigers and we'll have more tigers. Yeah. Yeah. What else would you think you'll have to do? Uh, also, uh, we should stop, make animals do things. We should let them live on their own. Because some people... They just take control over animals. They don't think of how uh, of how they will feel. 
Yeah, that is very true. But do you think and anybody could potentially take control over a tiger and domesticate it like we do with dogs yeah yeah many people do that people have tigers in their homes yeah yeah you are absolutely right there are proven instances of people domesticating even tigers although it is not something most of us should try there's actually a very interesting case like I was telling you about Kailash Sankhala, right? There's another very famous wildlife conservationist in India. His name is Saroj Raj Chaudhary. He was also a part of India civil services. There was one tiny little tiger cub uh, that had been abandoned by its mother or maybe the mother died or something and the, tug, the, the cub was very weak. So at that point in time, usually you'll take that cub in and you'll give it some medical assistance in hospitals and things like that. Yeah. So then they try to reintroduce the cub into the forest, but the cub kept returning to Sarojra Chaudhary's house. He was then the forest officer and he was very caring towards the tigress, uh, this little cub, and he used to go pat it and you know feed it also. The tigress grew so fond of him. Each time they'll release it in the morning, by afternoon it'll wander and come back. And it'll be waiting outside that hedge of his house. If you were Saroj Raj Chaudhary, what would you have done? I would uh, somehow uh, console it and try to convince it to stay in the jungle. Right, yeah, correct. I think he might have tried it. I don't know exactly what transpired. But whatever it was, finally this tigress, her name is Kerry. Uh, she kept coming back to him no matter how many times they let her into the forest. Eventually, he took her into his house. Like we all have dogs in our house, Sarojra Chaudhary had Kerry with him. Sarojra Chaudhary was very fond of many animals. He also had a deer and a couple of other little uh, creatures. Can you imagine in his house in that... It was not a small garden. It's part of a huge wildlife park. So, you know, it's a very big area with huge trees and dense forests and all of that. There's enough space for all these creatures to run around and play. And all of them coexisted. Wow! This is really surprising. Anna? Yeah. It's a very beautiful story. I, I won't go into the entire story now. So when N.K. Ranjit Singh Ji, this person is telling you about who was the first project tiger head for some time and the person who helped draft India's Wildlife Act. He was a very close friend of Saroj Raj Chaudhary. Saroj Raj Chaudhary. So he had gone to visit him once. So he was sleeping in the guest bedroom. So in the morning, you know how he was woken up. Carrie would come, rub his, his her face on his on his legs or on his body or on his bed sheet and say, No, it's time to get up. Come, we need to play. <laughs> and then he said sometimes he'd feel so tired, he'll pull that rajai on his face or that uh, the blanket on his face. And uh, the tigress would get very angry because he's not woken up yet. So it will go use his its paws and try to remove the ch chadar from its face. But despite all this, uh, the tigress was usually very careful. It was kind of aware that its claws could be a little sharp. You know, it could tear. It, it would be very easy for a tigress to just tear a chadar. <laughs> it can tiger you. It can tear a human flesh. <laughs> chadar is nothing for it. But it was always still very careful, huh? Kheri. Occasionally, he says he might get a small tear or so on his shirt when he's playing with Kheri. What Kerry would do is simply jump on top of him <laughs> and say, no, now get up. <laughs> and finally, he would have to get up. There's a spectacular photograph of Ranjit Singh Ji with uh, Kerry. Um, I will leave a photo. I will leave a link to this photograph in a blog. And you can find a link to that in the show notes below. But it's it's beautiful. How would you feel if a big tiger jumped on top of you and tried to wake you up in the morning? <laughs> I think I would feel breathless because a tigress weighs up to 122 to 220 kgs. 
<laughs> yeah, you would feel breathless is a very nice way of describing what you would feel. Yeah, that's true. I think the story that really moved me was uh, Carrie was playing around with this uh, deer and she's played with this deer for a long time. By mistake, when she was running and playing, maybe running and catching with the deer, I think by mistake, she hurt the deer in some way. And the deer died. And so Sarojra Chaudhary dug a small grave inside his garden and he buried the deer. Apparently, Carrie sat next to that grave. She knew what she had done and she felt so bad. She sat next to the grave day and night without drinking a drop of water or eating a morsel of food for three full days. Uh, she must have felt very sad that by mistake she killed her uh, own friend. Yeah, it was sad. Shortly after that, Carrie herself died. How? She caught some disease and I don't know, partly maybe she was still feeling bad and she caught a disease, she died. Uh, shortly after Carrie died, Sarojra Chaudhary became so sad even he died. Yeah, he must have felt very sad because uh, he lost both of his pets. Yeah. Sometimes some humans can feel even more connected to the wildlife than we feel towards other human beings. Yeah, it is sad. Anyway, yeah, we all think of tigers as these creatures which we need to be afraid of. But there are many instances where tigers have been remarkably great friends, actually, of even humans. Of not just humans, of even deer, as we can see from this story. It was wonderful to explore this side of a creature that we often call the king of the Indian jungle. So let's take a short break here and we'll come back in the next episode where Smyan and I will discuss how the tigers who were almost extinct in India at the time of the Indian independence shot up in numbers through the efforts of people like Kailash Sankhala, Saroj Raj Chaudhary, M.K. Ranjit Singh Ji and many more such wonderful wildlife conservationists. Oh yes, I forgot, I did start this episode with a question for you. What was the national animal of India initially? The answer is, it was the lion. So, in 1972, after the Wildlife Act was passed, India changed its national animal to the tiger. Because, I guess they realized at that point in time that the lion is really just found in one state in India. Whereas a tiger is widespread across the country. Join us in the next episode where Smyan and I talk about many more stories about Project Tiger and about the life of our forest rangers inside the wild and dense forests of India. Mm-hmm.